Hi folks, Astronomy Live. Welcome to my new channel, Annotated SDO. You'll find the link to this channel in the video description. It's actually a channel that I've set up to be run by a bot, but it's a useful bot. And what it does is once a day, it will annotate images from SDO and upload them as a video. So you can see the latest video here. And basically each video will actually contain about the last 48 hours worth of images. But that provides some buffer room. Uh, in case there's an issue with either the bot or the computer running it or the internet connection to that bot, uh, it will give me some time to reset things before you start to get gaps between the videos. The other type of video it will upload is predictions of future eclipses. And it's actually going to sort these into two different playlists. So if you just want to see daily annotation videos, that will automatically be uploaded to this playlist here whereas the Eclipse predictions will go into a separate playlist here. And in this case, I've actually included two previous eclipses that have already happened from that double eclipse from earlier this month. Uh, I forced the computer clock back in time to generate those videos to test the program, and sure enough, it generated accurate predictions for those eclipses and uploaded, uploaded them as two separate videos. Each video uh, showing an eclipse will start and end at the start and end of that eclipse when the moon or earth is either beginning to or no longer touching the sun. And so it actually splits that one event into two videos uh, and it shows where each event started in the title. So if we click this you'll see this is what it will look like when it's predicting that an eclipse is going to occur. And right now the bot is set to look one week out in advance. So every day it will check throughout that week and see if there are any eclipses coming up. Uh, if there are, and if it hasn't already predicted an eclipse from that object at that time, then it will generate a new video that will be uploaded to this channel. So you can see that here. And the source code that's running all of this has been uploaded to GitHub. So if you go to my SDO annotation GitHub, and I'll put the link to this in the video description you'll now see two active branches. One is the YouTube annotation bot. This is the bot running the daily annotation videos, annotating the real images from SDO and uploading those once a day. The other is the prediction bot that looks out one week and uploads any, uh, any videos of any eclipses if any are detected in that week and it hasn't already predicted them. Obviously that's a much more complicated program it's not super elegant and it could probably be cleaned up a bit in terms of the efficiency, but it's functional. So here's the code there. Uh, and one thing I want to point out here is there's a new dependency down here at the bottom. This is not included because this is really just standard YouTube API code. YouTube upload prediction, that's not the standard name for it, but um, it's basically just the usual YouTube API for uploading videos to YouTube and you can go to the YouTube API and see all that information for yourself. It's basically just the test code. The only change I've really made to it is that I also dumped in the playlist insertion uh, API into the YouTube upload API. So those were actually two separate uh, example test codes that were available on the YouTube API site and I dumped them into one single file so it would not only upload the video but also insert it into a playlist of my choice. And so I'm not going to upload that to GitHub, it's not really my code, it's Google's code, but you can just go get it from the YouTube API. Uh, inserting it into a playlist is not mandatory but I find it useful and convenient. So uh, the other thing I want to point out here, the other uh, peculiarity about this is that it also requires a couple text files for the future prediction bot. So if I go back here you'll see two text files eeclipse and meclipse list. So you'll need to download these as well. Uh, I know it says 12 days ago that's actually a bit deceptive because I set my computer clock back uh, to before that double eclipse so that I could generate that prediction. And once I verified that was working, I went ahead and pushed it to GitHub. And apparently, GitHub took that as the actual date, 
when I uploaded those files, but that's not actually the case. Those were uploaded earlier tonight. Uh, but it needs these, even if as only a placeholder, uh, the program will look for these files, and if it doesn't find them, it will crash. And what this is, is a list of previously detected eclipses. So I started off here just to generate a placeholder. I put January 1st, 1900. It doesn't actually mean anything. I just need a number that it would look at because basically it's going to look at the list of previously predicted eclipses and make sure that the one it is found, if it's found one, is not situated between the start and end time uh, of, that, uh, of that newly found eclipse. Basically verifying that it is in fact a newly found eclipse, not a previously found eclipse. If it's a previously found eclipse that is uh, within 30 seconds of the start time of what it had found previously, it will not upload a new video to YouTube. It will be intelligent enough to say, hey, I've seen this before, I'm not going to generate a new video based on that. And it does this check once a day, once again, looking out one week into the future, and it scans that entire week. Again, this is useful if there turns out to be an issue if the bot crashes or the computer uh, has to be reset or the internet goes down, whatever the case, if I have to reset the bot, I don't want to miss an eclipse that it would have caught. So it will rescan the entire week every time it runs so that uh, we're sure that we're able to uh, predict any eclipses in advance if there turns out to be a day or two of downtime. So that, that link will be uh, in the video description and you can download it and inspect it uh, for yourself. As I said, the code here is not super elegant. Um, for one thing, the code for predicting the positions of the Earth, the Moon, the Sun get repeated a few times throughout the code here where you can see here the code is, is basically duplicated. I could have put this out into a separate method and just called it twice. There were a couple small changes that need to be made for whether or not it's predicting an eclipse caused by the Earth or an eclipse caused by the Moon, uh, but there's very few changes between those two, so really I could have put this out as a separate method and just called it uh, twice to cut down the lines of code here. We're up to uh, over 350 lines of code, but again, it could be trimmed down a lot more uh, if I took the time to do that. Uh, but nevertheless, it is functional, and uh, I think the result is quite cool. So this will now be a channel that automatically hosts uh, all of the prediction videos that my software generates uh, for future eclipses as well as annotated images from SDO. So go subscribe if you want notifications of when those eclipses are going to occur. Thanks for watching. Clear skies folks.